Got it. What's up? What up, my man? What's going on? Good, man. I'm good. How you been? Chilling, chilling, chilling. Happy to see your black face, man. Yeah, I can barely see yours still. Yo, I already told Deuce. Deuce tried this, oh, okay? That's hilarious. Toss, Toss knows, Tam knows, Craig Jones knows, everyone knows I was formerly pitch black. Yo, <laughs> all right? And I'm still pitch perfect, okay? And like I explained, like I explained to Deuce, this is a special black that glows, okay? You know, you know this we is a special you? black. This you know is a sheen. You? you guys dreamed that you could be this Hershey. Bro, you know what we should have called, called you full night. We should have called you full night. Uh, full <laughs> night time. Midnight and this full night, bro. You're full, that black. Full night. That's how black you are. <laughs> we <laughs> always come out hot Talk in no this. warning podcast. <laughs> Red the dot, the church headshot. all day. That's how we do it because we're family more than friends over here. All right. So let's get into yeah, it. Good. Since we were waiting for Tam calling people too black. We are doing the blackest antics waiting for you <laughs> to get on this damn <laughs> Zoom call. Well, we're, we're <laughs> we're late. You guys watching comedy. Yeah. What? <laughs> Anyways, oh. let's get into it off the bat. First of all, I want to give big shout out to both of my boys, Tam, all the way from Germany, staying up late night to come out and represent for us. Love so it. respect, my it. man. And Tuss, my man, taking time away because he's like a double feature movie starting to step up in the front office and play ball at the same time. So shout out to him for taking time out. Millwoods people always respect and support each other to the end. So big up to that. Up to my man, Craig Jones, my co-host and partner. You know what I mean? Taking Play time back. away from his two jobs. Cause like I say, he works harder than a Jamaican mother himself. You know what I mean? So big up to Craig. So Tuss, my man, White Caps, you guys just made it to the playoffs. Yep. Clinch the spot. You know what I mean? How's that feel? You've been in the playoffs enough Huge. times now. Yeah, yeah. I've been in the playoffs with Toronto. Um, but it was One it was team. kinda it was different this time around because we've been through so much. We had to relocate to Portland last year, living out oh, of a God. hotel in Portland because we weren't able to play games in Vancouver. And then okay. this year we had to relocate to Salt Lake City. We were there for four months, basically. That was our home. Um, our home games were played in Salt Lake. No fans. Um, so Oof. we've had we've you had didn't a even get no season. Mormons to boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, man. So that was only us, us and the other two Canadian teams. So we were at a disadvantage this year for sure. And we, um, you know, we when we got back home, we we really locked up our home and uh, won eight out of ten games, tied Ooh. one. So um, quite the home streak. So that got us into the playoffs. No doubt. Respect to that. And then now you said you're going to transition maybe into the front office. Yeah. I mean, I'm still, still playing. I uh, still want to play, you know, one, two, maybe three more years, but um, I'm fortunate enough to have a club that is supporting me. So I've been working in the office as well. Um, I'm working in the diversity inclusion and community department Big and up. also, also doing uh, other things across the front office. So I'm um, really, really, making an impact there and doing no good things doubt as well. yo and bless ups to you for your humanitarian of the year there that's a big thank award you. thank you always thank you nice. means a lot it means a lot always good to you know how we grew up exactly. any type of help that we would have got as kids would have helped us in our in our lives and our career so now that i'm in the position to do something i'm kind of taking it with full force you know just doing as much as i can in the community yo and much respect to that you know you sound like an art fan too. You raised a lot of money selling some art and stuff. I'm digging that for the food. Yeah, thing. that was during the yeah. pandemic. Um, yeah. We raised, uh, I think, around 150 thousand for the Vancouver Food Bank through uh, I don't know, like a campaign, art piece campaign. People bought them, supported the uh, frontline workers, and then all the money got to, uh, donated to the food bank. So very good cause, good work. Nice dog, and my man, Tamandani in Saliwa. Yo, this guy's like my brother. I talked to him only on like group chat, but we called the other day and I text him after. I'm like, yo, I miss hearing your voice, guy. <laughs> that guy, that guy, you know what I mean? He talks so calm and Tuss, you know, he talks so calm. He has so much shit to burst out at any given moment. <laughs> Tam loves a debate. 
<laughs> no, that's what made us like tight. Oh. Craig knows me. Me and Craig oh. are like that too, but that's what cinches you up sometimes. You know what I mean? You gotta have those yeah, friends you can talk heavy, heavy to. You know what I mean? Thoughts are sending shots right now. <laughs> Yo, but Tam, what's good with you out there in Germany these days? What's going on? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just celebrating. Actually, a new birth of my uh, my son two weeks ago, actually. Oh, hey! Just, yeah. Look at this Third guy. Yeah, Look I know. at this too. guy. Yeah, I know. I know, right? Yeah. Two sons. Yeah. What, <laughs> Tam? Look at this guy. He's strong. Uh, I came yeah. through with the next son. Okay. Yeah, Round yeah. three. I thought you were re- no. going to retire from all that. No? Nope. One so more. Too. That's so true. But anyway, no, no that. Congratulations. Uh, actually, thanks. I started, a, uh, I opened up a restaurant also here. Was it last, uh, in August? So I was running that like he- head on for the last three months. It's been a, like the real learning curve. We're like, you know how to run a restaurant, how everything goes. Let's toss a smile in the eyes. I've seen, not easy, man. I've seen the struggle, but it's been not easy. Really what kind of food? What kind of food? Uh, I'm actually just doing just uh, regular stuff. I just did uh, burgers here. What else did I have? Yeah, I like Germans. Ger- like, think about Germany is or Germans. They don't have that culture where they make burgers. Like, they don't have like the the culture where you grill up your own burger in your backyard and you have like you know your own actual minced meat that's been put together type of burger like big 250 50 grand type, uh, type of burger so i was like let me just do that just to see how it works out and they've just been loving it like they fell in love with it it's going crazy so, and, yeah we li- like i live in the wine valley here so there's a lot of tourism in the summertime so there's just a lot of people that are coming through so i built i yeah long story short i got uh, uh i was allowed to basically kind of build a mock two restaurant on right next to the water where we are so i just i've been running that for the last three months and outdoor then, team uh, that's yeah. it and the weather holds what? up for you to maintain an outdoor thing uh, yeah no like, like in the winter time everything closed out here because it's a holiday spot so in the summertime okay. is when all the work happens so seasonal work happens, it's a seasonal bar that. Yeah, yeah, it's a seasonal thing. The okay. crazy thing, actually, is I don't know if you guys know there was the floods that happened in Germany uh, a while ago. Okay. So that was here in my area that happened. So let's say like a, a town maybe 45 minutes from here got washed up completely. And then I actually happened to open up my restaurant two weeks after the flood. So I was wow. really fortunate that I did it right after that. Right so after that. Like, yeah, and now you know and now you also know it could happen though so. yeah of course no it's, it, that's why it's seasonal like i have to take everything out during the winter because in, in the winter is when the floods actually normally happen around here. okay and then after yeah. beyond that just like the music and just yeah just keeping busy man keeping busy no doubt respect to that respect to both of you now we got to get into the business at hand the Go biggest ahead. game to date in canadian history now i have two former members Tam, are you, or first of all, Puss, can I say that? Are you still active? Are you still in contact? Like, what's the situation? Uh, still active. I mean, on the death chart, no definitely. Doubt. But obviously, you know, it's like, you know, I, I compare it to like university where you have your years and then after that, it just doesn't make no sense. Doubt. You know, um, obviously, I would love to be involved. I would help and give everything if called upon. No but doubt, no there's doubt. a reality to the situation where it's a progression where you work towards World Cup to World Cup and you need new crops, you need new players, you need new um, talent coming through. And we have some of the best talent that has, that has come through the program in a long time. So no doubt. Respect. Very happy that. to watch and Respect be on the sidelines, you. but ready anytime, of course. Um, and very happy with the group as well. Very exciting group. And Tam, you know, I'm going to definitely call you back and us we're going to talk separately with you guys individually about your careers experiences so on but in this moment in this time tam i want you to tell me how does it feel to see how canada's progressed and see what like they're in position right now if they just lock and load stay the course they're in the world cup how does that feel i legit uh like i told you i was running a restaurant i was working like 14 hour days and then the game would be at like three o'clock in the morning and I would stay up and watch because I had to watch, bro. Respect. That's Canadian love right there. Yeah, you know right. No, like, it's, it's, it like you said, it's so exciting. And I've been like, I've been watching the national team for a long time because I got out of the program a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And it was always cool to see like friends or to see like, you know, seeing Canadian teams play. 
but you never really had the feeling or the the expectation that we we should win this game and that mm-hmm. just brings a whole new level of excitement to watching these guys play because it's like like if you're not from Europe you come to Europe you see such a huge amount of passion that these these people have for their teams that no Canadians ever really have because we never had any teams that you you could identify with 100% to say that's my team and I want them to win no matter what and you feel no it no. If, if things don't go well so this is the first time I think in my life other than like you know Barcelona I adopted as my team but this is the first time in my life I'm like this is a lifelong team that I've supported that it has the chance finally to you know I to really push through really do. so yeah it's 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 big bro it's real big real big and yeah. Joe's I was gonna hit. say, yo, I bought a lottery ticket, so if I win, we're all going. Like, let's just, <laughs> let's just fall out and guitar. Let's do it. So, fingers no crossed. Doubt. No doubt, yo, Tuss, and like being like right on the crux of being on the team so recently. Obviously, you're in contact with like enough of these guys, no doubt. And Tam, I know for sure that you go way back with Captain Atiba, so I know you guys all have like oh, contact. Yeah, you all have contact with players. So what do you think is like the main thing? Like, what is the main thing you feel like is coming off of these guys about their chances? Do you feel like the confidence is there? They believe they're going to win? Definitely. These are, these are players playing at the highest level. You have guys like Jonathan David, who is outscoring Messi, Neymar, Mbappe right now in the current season in League One or whatever. And um, you have Alfonso, who is on probably the best club team in the world, arguably. You know, you have guys like Atiba and you have guys like Kyle Lahren, who are legends in Turkey. You know, Kyle is, I, I don't know how many goals he has, but he's been on fire as of late. I think he scored four of four goals in his last five games. So these are kids that are in form, confident, hungry, in young. The prime, yeah. You know, no I, I guarantee they're confident as ever and, and feeling like this is an opportunity that they should capitalize on. No doubt. And Tuss, having played at the World Cup at the youth level in Edmonton yourself, I know because I was there, you know, mm-hmm. representing T- Tuss from long time, Tam from long time. It's full circle talking about this game, knowing I watch you guys wear the jersey and been like, yo, that's my boy. This guy's <laughs> out here scoring goals in the big game. And then now it's like we're watching a kid who's literally, you know, who grew up a generation under us, like literally carrying this team. You know what I mean? An African refugee story. It's such a Canadian story to the fullest, dog. And I even like that little piece because I know he said or he came from Ghana, not born, but you know what I mean? His refugee camp in Ghana before he came here. And you guys seeing a Canadian kid explode in a game like you said, Tam? where people don't understand the passion in Canada, seeing someone like the guy won champions league already. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's on pace to do like the craziest things. He's 21. How does that like, how do you feel when you see people there, man? We're going to have 50,000 people there. That's that place is going to be rocking, dude. I'm excited. How does that, how does that. It's so special. He's a, he's a, like, he's a generational player. You don't get many players like that in a generation, you know, he's breaking the ceiling, playing with the best, you know, like you said, already has a cabinet of trophies full at the age of 21. No doubt. 21. So like, you know, he's just getting started, which is exciting. And I'll say this. Um, from my perspective and I toss will tell you I'm this kid's biggest fan from time as far as like in the circles that we have of friends where we discuss what we feel about football players or not but I think it's really important that we don't overlook how good this whole team is because he is a generational talent but there's a lot of generational talents that are on national teams that don't do anything because they just don't have the teams that are capable of pulling off what this team is on the verge of pulling off and I think it's really important to to point out that they are all in places where as before you had Canadian players that were playing on European teams and mm-hmm. they were all generally fringe players on fringe teams. So you had guys that were, you know, 
Chelsea, but then the rest of the teams were playing on teams that were in lower divisions and lower parts of the table, and they themselves were barely ever getting playing time on this team. It was sort of like, okay, well, then we'll just get whatever players we have that are registered on some professional team somewhere. We can have uh, on a list, uh, we can say that they play all professional football, but they're not really integral parts of their team. Now they're not active. They're not all in form. Yeah, now we have players that are integral parts of very good teams in no very doubt. good leagues, and they are actually they are actually bringing a winning mentality that they're that they're playing with day in and day out. They're no longer satisfied with just being there, just being on a good team. They're only satisfied if they achieve something whenever they play. And this is the type of environment that a generational player needs to have in order to himself be able to succeed. Because if you have Alfonso Davies playing with a whole bunch of truck drivers, he's not going to be able to do what he did last. Game. He's Big not going to have that freedom. He's not going to, boom. He's not going to have that. And like no, me, no. when I watch the game, I'm seeing, I'm seeing what the other guys are doing, and these guys are good football players. They're right? sick. They're really yep. good football players. So this is something I think is really important that as a fan base people don't start to overlook because it affects the players themselves like they they know they're doing well and they know that they're really good players but they want to be respected as well so it's great that we respect Alfonso for what he does but we need to make sure we respect this entire team because these guys are really really good players as far as the standards of football players that we've had that have represented the national team are concerned this is the top top notch this is the best crop that we've ever had in my opinion and they all need to be respected yeah. You know why I love goosebumps. You know, <laughs> you know, and you know why I love bringing my boys on here and having this conversation because Tam Dunn knows how much I fuck with sports, <laughs> and you know that I finally have a time where I get to see Canada play football exactly like what you just described. Exactly. These Asian Buchanans, yep. these nice. Richie Larea, exactly. these Eustachios, exactly. these Kamal Millers. Exactly. Dog. Exactly. Dog. They're these, playing these, these giving kids, goes these, these. the effort. And yeah, one thing exactly. I want to point out too, as you say, all these players are making this team together. And Tuss, maybe you can speak on this. I loved mm. the fact that when they're beefing, they all get in it together hard. Not yeah, getting pushed around, not uh, going to Latin <laughs> countries and having these Latin people making them feel intimidated, having like I've seen Canada for years. No, dog. That last few games in Mexico and then back in Toronto, I love seeing the grit. And of course, it's funny because being a universal sports fan, being a hockey to football fan, I can actually incorporate loving seeing that after the whistle, hockey scrum where your teammates actually don't just skate away like the Oilers did when they lost. I see how Team Canada fusing together when they're winning. They're also repping together. They're also standing up for each other. Do you guys notice that's, that camaraderie? That's that's um that's credit to John Herdman. Um, you know, I've been in a few camps with him, and he really tries to instill that brotherhood. You know, like if your man, if your teammate's down, you fight for him. You know, you fight for that inch for your teammate. You know, if there's a scruffle or a little brawl or a fight or something, everyone's fighting. You know, it's a brotherhood, and that's uh, has a lot to do with John Herdman respected coach Herdman and shout out to Tuss for pointing that out and then like Tam going back to you you can speak on the past where it wasn't probably as functional (laughs) it was more dysfunctional well I'll say say, I'll say this I mean I don't know John Herdman but I 100% agree with what Tuss said and I think because I'm not there I don't see it but I think also part of it is the fact that uh, maybe because because of the mentality that he has or the, the upbringing and the background that he has to football. He's done something that I think past coaches uh, maybe didn't necessarily do as much as he has. He, he's selecting players just based on their merit as football players, not necessarily on their characters as people or what he thinks about them on a personal level. Because I think that's one of the benefits that a lot of Canadian coaches have had in the past is there wasn't there wasn't so Damn, much times cutting out so for much. me. I don't know what I cut out. No, I see. you're good for me. I hear him. I think it's, oh, okay. I think it's agi- yeah, you froze. Yeah, agi- sorry. So like, I, like in the past, there wasn't so much pressure for coaches to 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 win with the Canadian national team that they weren't pressured to pick just good players regardless of what they thought about them on a personal level. And now you have a bunch of kids that are. 
that have grown up in an environment where they can express themselves, they can be free to be whoever they want to be and not feel like they have to fit a certain mold in order to be able to select it to play for the national team so that they can be like the rest of the guys that are normally picked on that team. And because they're free to express themselves, they're, they're free to be dogs if they want to be dogs. Like Danielle's a dog if he wants to be a dog. And if somebody steps on him, he's going to step back and he's okay because he doesn't. He knows that the coach is not going to he's not going to bite his foot for doing something that he would normally do anyways to protect himself or his teammates. And this is where you get that type of freedom for guys to say, no, we, we're not having that because that's just who we are. And I, I really love watching them for that as well. It's the same freedom that they have when they're playing. It's the same freedom that they have, obviously. Then this is the type of stuff you see when maybe when they're in the hotels, when they're in the, when they're in the locker rooms, they probably listen to whatever music they want to listen to. They don't have to do certain things just because it's, it's what the, the coach wants or it's what the environment is supposed to be like. They're just being who they want to be. And when you're able to express yourself like this, you're able to play a lot more freely because you don't think. You don't think anymore. You just act and you just react to whatever it is that your body's been conditioned to do your entire life. And I'm seeing this in these guys. I'm telling you, it's so exciting. Man. It's so so exciting. you see an evolution in the Canadian football, oh, not yeah. just the, the players, but the coaching and everything as well. No doubt. The mentality, the whole mentality in Canada around the national team has shifted. And it's, it's very obvious and you can see it. Sick. And I yo, can tell they're partying a lot together. That's what I'm thinking. Like after that game in Mexico, you know they're getting after it. Like I was like, shit. I was ask you guys, like, what was it like to play in Mexico? Like, what was that like? I could just imagine that atmosphere must have been bonkers. Yeah, I mean, I played in Mexico on two different situations. Played against Club America, Tigres, all that during the TFC Champions League run. Um, hostile environments, hard environments to play in. Played against Mexico and Azteca difficult altitude so to get a result there um very difficult and mexico's tough tough place all around and then and then also uh before we get off of the game topic we were just talking about other players can you guys each give me a player that isn't like you said getting the magnifying glass on him that you've finger pointed out as like that dude is a player for people to focus on or watch for people who aren't as close to the team and only know Alfonso's name. Me, it's uh, the number six that plays in uh, Portugal. What's his name again? Estacio. 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 Yeah, for me, that kid's nice. Bro. He's nice. And he plays some nice balls. He's, like, he's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Like he, he's also like, he's got that, that like that little tough kid mentality to him as well like he's not he's not your typical i'm a nice guy canadian it's okay that's yeah, it. that's, they don't have it. Those that's they don't so have those. crucial man like that's i said like i said like i said before they it there a certain element of being selected to play for the national team was you having a good personality now it seems like it doesn't matter what your personality is. What do you bring to the table? Do you bring a winning mentality? And are you willing to do whatever it is needed to do, do it for the team to win? And can you also play football? And these kids don't care. I just love the fact that they don't care. Like there's no fear. That's what you need if you're going to a, to a hostile environment. You need people that have what we call vavos or balls, whatever, if I'm allowed to cut. You need kids that have balls that say, no, nah, I'm not scared of you. What are you going to do to me? What are you going to do up. to me? You're standing in the stand somewhere 20 feet away from me. What are you going to do? Let's Yo, you don't Let's know start. how I love seeing Osario's yelling at the Mexicans. Exactly. Put one in there and shut those people up. Azteca, <laughs> all quiet. Put the Azteca, <laughs> all quiet. Shut up, man. Toronto India scoring goals in your place. Shut up, man. Tuss, <laughs> please believe Tuss. When you see this reaction, this is how I am when 87 scores or number 9, 11. You know, Tam, when I used to watch those long shots from far away. When I see my man score, this is the same reaction you guys get. I'm in my house going, ah! Yeah, it's tough to that Bill Woods! Bill Woods! Get him, Tuss! The player, the player for me... The best one I've ever scored. The player for me is um, Kripo, Maxim Kripo. I know he's maybe not considered the number one goalkeeper right now. And I love Milan. We grew up, we got our first cap together. Me and Milan, Boyan are very tight. Oh, oh. Um, but Max is my club goalkeeper. I see him day in, day out. I've seen him save our asses on many occasions. He is very good. I think You're he's top striker. three. I think he's top three in the MLS. And I think he's very bright for Canada in the future. So Maxim Kripo is my player. No doubt. And you're a striker, so that's double props, you know? Okay, yo, Jones, let's move on because this is Red Dot Headshot, no warning podcast. And you know, we don't always just keep it 
with one topic. We spread the love around, we talk about all type of things, current events, other sports, politics, whatever. You know, Tam, like I said, Tam speaks all languages, Turkmenistanian, <laughs> Azerbaijanese, Big Oilers everything. Fan too. Everything. Yo, Tuss stepped away Boy. for a minute. Hopefully he's coming <laughs> coming back. He did the Millwood step aside. You know, yeah. right? There he is. Okay. Need a charger. Like Irie just went for a quick party and thing, huh? <laughs> okay. But yo, Tam, Travis Scott, being a musician and being someone I know for a fact as my brother, you love music like I do. First of all, do you mess with Travis Scott? Because I do. I think he I like out. him. I like his music. Oh, Damn froze. Yo, but I have to say this. Toss looks like if Rick Ross went on Slim Fast. <laughs> what? <laughs> if Rick Ross went on Slim Fast? Oh, yeah. Why? Because I got a beard? <laughs> what the hell? Tom oh, came yeah. out of nowhere with that one. Rick <laughs> Ross yeah, went, Slim went on Slim what? Fast? What? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Toss, I don't know where that was either, man. Tom's yeah, watching right. too much stand-up comedy, trying to yeah. come up with his own punchlines over here. You know what I mean? Yo, but back to the Travis Scott. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tam, like, do you mess with Travis Scott musically, first of all? Oh, heavy, of course. Okay. You mess with the 808s and all that Chicago drill. Yeah. So, no doubt. Yeah, Me heavy. too. And then Tuss, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like Travis. I like Travis. No doubt. Okay. And then seeing everything that's happened. What is your takeaway from this story? As everyone on, on earth knows, eight people got killed. I think even more, like we're in ICU still. Nine now. Now it's nine. Nine people, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's just wild. But like, what, do you, what is your feelings on this situation? Stampeding? I'll, to me is, I mean, I, I'll, I I'll go get, first. I don't I, get that. When I, think of, when I think of this situation and what happened, tragic. Um, very tragic for the people who lost their lives, people who got hurt. I just think of um, ways to prevent it in the future. You know, you could talk about what went wrong and, you know, what should have been done, but how can you stop something like this from happening again in the future? And I just think that should be the main conversation. Obviously, Lord, I don't think anyone wants anyone to die at a concert and, you know, things get kind of rowdy at a concert. But my, my, my whole focus is on how, can this be prevented in the future? Because, I mean, if it can happen once, it can happen again. You know? No doubt. Smart, Tass. Forward thinking. Tom, what about you? Uh, I think I'll kind of alliterate on what Toss said and just say I think people have to, <clears throat> have to like, basically believe to a certain extent that the artists aren't going there with disregard to people's lives. Like, it's not like... Travis Scott says, I don't care. I don't care how dangerous it is in the in the venue. I want to go ahead and do this, uh, do this concert, regardless if people could die or not. I'm sure if he was aware that it would happen, he would have avoided it. So, like Toss said, that would be then the first thing you want to do is to find ways to avoid it in the future. But then on the other hand, you sometimes you kind of have to understand that people will believe that for the sake of revenues somebody might have said okay we don't care if we're at capacity let's just keep on filling this place up because we might be able to get more money out of it if they were selling more tickets if they were sold all the tickets that they sold and people just got in there illegally anyways and there's nothing really much you can do other than hope that the security is able to fulfill its job and stop people from getting in there so if i also i'm not a fan of always looking for fault in today's society because that seems like what everybody wants to do whenever something goes wrong you just want to find out who's at fault instead of finding out what the solution is solutions like so, thank you yeah good job Tom. So, yo that's, I mean, that's, 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 what, that's what people need to focus on is the solutions to these issues and speaking on that like back to like the euro final people rush wembley i heard there was like thousands of people who just oh, like yeah. didn't get didn't get to have their seat i can't imagine oh, well, well. Yeah, paying for my bad. euro ticket and some next hooligans like you ain't coming here unless you want to get knocked out you're not sitting in your seat and real talk they just rush the stadium and that's that what do you guys yeah. think's going on because you guys have played in so many big venues like what's going on like how are these events going on like it's 2021 people are rushing the euro final people are getting stampeded at a Two concert, off, man. Two years that, off. like stepped on in a stampede, and I think it's, like what the I hell? Think it, I think part of it is, um, I think part of it is preparation from the venues themselves and preparation from the people. Sometimes it takes, let's say, thirty to forty-five minutes to get seventy thousand people in their seats. 
people show up a half hour before the game. They want to all get in at the same time, and then they have to wait. And then before they realize that the game's already started, they're they're upset because they're not moving. They all start rushing in or, or stampeding in there. So maybe it's maybe the preparation needs to be a little bit better, where people start to realize they need to show up one hour, hour and a half if they want to be able to all get in very peacefully and all get into their seats before the game starts. Because the game's going to start when the game's going to start. The most people that are watching are on TV. They're not waiting forty five minutes for the fans to get inside the stadium. So it's it's one of the maybe it's one of those things where the preparation that needs to be done for these things to go smoothly needs to be needs to be thought of before these games happen. But yeah, I agree. Just just thinking off a, of a solution off the top of my head. Um, what if like they had tickets, but each ticket had a time that you have to arrive there. So like say you pay for the nosebleeds, you have to be there an hour before if you hear front row you get to be there 20 minutes before but that's all incorporated in the ticket process that could be a solution for a venue and that would uh, that would avoid like herds of people staggered coming entry staggered entry staggered entry no doubt. I totally. just I um, like, thinking of solutions well and i feel like they sh- they make uh like the ushers shoulder the responsibility and these are like 50 year old people and stuff like they, mm-hmm. they can't be expected to stop people from coming in hot you know like come on he's yeah. just like well, i'm just doing this as a part-time job like what the yeah hell you're for me? you're absolutely right yes. this is the part this is the part where uh <laughs> negligence comes in because whoever is running the venue or whoever owns the place all they're worried about is them making their bottom dollar and then it's like okay you guys would, i'm paying you guys to go ahead and figure out how these guys all, all these people are getting in there so then it does become the responsibility of whoever is organizing the event to say, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Like Toss said, okay, we'll make sure that the people who pay premium tickets can show up a little bit later, but everybody else can show up early because we have to find ways to get everybody in there smoothly and then out smoothly as well. So yeah, that's why people might be upset because of the negligence that whoever is running the obviously just care that you pay for your ticket and then everything else you have to figure out yourself. So. <laughs> I was like laughing so hard because when Craig said that's a part-time job, I was just picturing like if I was getting rushed by that many people, I, like, I would have been like, you know, you know, exactly. you know the matadors, you know the matadors. I would have been like, oh, hey, hey, stop it, go in. I'll turn the train stop for you. Nobody stampeding my black ass. Exactly. You no, know, oh, hey. Olay, they'll be like, Andy, you're on video letting everybody in the train stop. Be like part-time job. <laughs> it was my time effort, baby. You know, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Okay, yo, thank you guys for pointing out that because in all the talk of this situation, nobody was nobody's talking about solutions, and that's actually yeah. crazy that yeah. everyone's just like you said, finger point, finger point, finger point. Nobody's well, talking yeah, about well, solutions. Well, yeah, no I mean, thought like, of that. we got like always take into account that people are grieving, also, you know, like you. The eight families that lost their family members, yeah, they're not think, they're not thinking about solutions. They're no. they're mad, you know. No, that's so, true. Like, too. So like, there's a, there's always two sides to every story. We're we're thinking about it from a quote unquote rational point of view because we're not affected at all. Like, no, no. imagine if my if my kids and if my kids die, I'm not talking about solutions right now. It's mad, you know what I mean? Straight. So goods. it's it, it, it's it all depends. Like we all see we all see the same situation from a million different perspectives, and we're just talking from our own right now. So it's it's hard, but yeah, that's how it is sometimes. And speaking of finding solutions, Tam brought it up to me, and being a man of brothers, Tam, and being a man of brothers, Tus, you seen this Jokic and Morris <laughs> beef in the NBA the other night. <laughs> And I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna give this one to Tam because he's been hot on this subject. <laughs> okay, okay, straight up. And anyways, we got a couple of other topics. God. So Jones, ask Tam what like, or or sorry, Tam. Yeah. What was your like initial take? Apparently, you have big feelings on the situation. Big feelings. Big feelings. I was at training. I got out of training. 150 messages, at least a third of them from Tam. All I see is Jokic this, Morris that, Jokic senior, Jokic junior, MMA. All here is yo, ask Tam. Uh, Tuss, yo, Tuss, Tuss is making public, Tuss is making private statements public, eh? Okay. You like this subject, okay. bro. No. I know no. you. Here's my whole no, no warning, red dot, headshot. You know, group group chat discussions no. are coming on here's here. My whole thing. No, listen, listen. Okay, here's my whole thing, right? Now, Marquise Morris knew what he was doing, bro. Like when he when he saw like 
first thing that happened was, I think there was a no, there was a non cog foul, right? So Marquis put his hands up because he was mad about the non cog foul. Then he sees Joker dribbling up the court, and then he says, "Okay, you know what? Let me go swipe this guy." But he's not going to swipe him just to swipe him. He's like, "I'm gonna send him a message." So he goes and slaps the guy in the ribs. No big Rasbach message. He didn't slap yeah, him in the ribs. Exactly. Body check him. Yeah, exactly. Body check him, right? check him in the ribs, right? Body check him in the ribs. And as soon as he does that, but here's my thing. As soon as he does that, he turns around and starts walking away. Way because he assumes if I start walking away, he can't do anything. <laughs> if I turn around and I start walking away, he oh, can't do so Tom seeing the hustle in it. Okay, exactly. You see what I'm saying? It was the hustle. Like, so you see it's the like, hustle in it. It's like it's, it's like you it's like if you know there's cops around, you go and you smack somebody, you turn around, and then you hopefully that if the cops see the reaction, they'll 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 arrest that guy to the rest of you. You started the whole thing. And Joker is basically saying, nah, I ain't having that. Here, take that one time. And then if you want to come do it next time, you can do it to my face and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. People are saying you shouldn't have hit him from behind. Well, the man turned his back on somebody he just smacked up. Like, what do you expect? Fair you enough. Know, formally. Listen, I, I, I agree. I agree with time, actually. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, listen, normally, what? No, you I said know, I normally agree. in the NBA when somebody does a hard foul on somebody and they know they don't want somebody hard, you'll hold them and let them know oh, yo, big dog. It was just a hit, it's a hard foul, but yo, take it, it's okay. But the man smacked him up, hit him up in the race, <laughs> and turned around and started to walk away. Started yeah. to walk away. Yeah. <laughs> I love this type of game. In, this, in sports, I love this stuff. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Tusk. And it was no. a blowout game too. That's the thing too. It's a blowout. Exactly. So, was done. so he knew, like he who was winning? MVP. Like he's in- yo, Jones. Who was winning? Denver was winning. Denver oh, was winning. Killing him. Yeah. It okay. So Markeith was doing it and definitely it- on purpose at the oh, end of the game. Like, it should have been on the, the, the court. Like the sore the- loser body check that yeah, we all seen in sports. Extra. No doubt. Yo and Tuss having yeah. brothers like if Kirk and Simon and them are if Kirk and Simon and them are in the crowd and you're getting roughed up, did you see them reacting like the Jokic brothers were? <laughs> who Simon Kirk? <laughs> I see Kirk. That's Kirk. That's Kirk's mo for sure. I can see Kirk running off the court. Amazed, He's hot blooded, that guy. No doubt, eh? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Nobody's jump kicking my little brother on the pitch, eh? No way. I can see <laughs> no. Kirk. I can see Kirk rushing the floor for sure. No Simon's doubt. Coming up with Mace, bro. He's not. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> 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 that's funny that's funny exclusive rickets files you know <laughs> the brother's exposed you out here that player, he's not gonna see right for a month bro <laughs> <laughs> so in other words the rickets would represent us just like the Jokic brothers represented 100 percent, no doubt and tam what about you i think for me knowing your boy brothers you're the hot one i don't uh, but i don't know siani and uh tay if they yeah. during a this game of cool. soccer no. No, I, I, I'm i hot when it comes to debating. No, I'm hot when it comes to debating, but for things like that, my uh, me and my brother were too, were too relaxed for that type of stuff. No, like, no. if somebody hit my brother, then I'll go, like, help my brother out. You know what I mean? Like, I'll go help him out and make sure that he's okay. But if, for, if I start a fight with somebody, it's really got to be, like, you really got to cross the line. Okay, like, no if you, like it's For me, that I to start fighting somebody, then I'm fighting till, until either I die or you die. Then it has to be, it has to be that bad. <laughs> But I'm not the fighting type of person. I'm not the fighting type of person. Neither my brothers, neither are they. Like, don't come and help me out. But toss his side, they're different. Yo, they're different. it's all good. We all have family and we all rep different, but it's all love. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. But, yeah. but yo, speaking of crazy reactions, do you guys really believe that this Amanita Diallo, do you really believe this some Tanya Harding 2.0 thing? Like, attacking... Attacking women for playing time? You see, say Paris, yeah. you know? I believe it. it. This one's messy. <laughs> I believe it. Is that a very messy? messy Yo, for anyone who's watching and doesn't know, a, f- a player on the PSG women's yeah. team, Amanita Diallo, she has been accused of having one of her teammates attacked by masked men and Bussing up her legs with metal bars, so everyone's calling it Tanya Harding 2.0. You know what I mean? This is Jones, crazy. Jones, what are you saying about this? Oh, it didn't surprise me at all. Like the French league's crazy. Like I was just like, ah, oh, yeah, this is par for the course. Here we go. Some some more. <laughs> so, yeah, I heard. I heard France's um, 
for footballers, it can be dangerous sometimes. Like just real. Well, don't always take the same way home. I heard and and stuff like that. So it's you know. Okay. I heard heard stories from Julian de Guzman about Marseille and stuff. And okay. I don't know. Streets is watching. Oh, they always rob people's houses and stuff when they're at games too. That's like their other mo. Common too. Yeah. I say there's two sides to that story, bro. I, my my take is two sides of the story. There's that France is dangerous, but I mean, I'm assuming that the accusations are true, just because I know and I know Toss knows as well. And I, I, we said this in, in our group chat: you can't be friends with people that you play in the same position with. It's just not. It's like it's that's almost, that serious. It's genetically important. Well, no. Here's the thing. Here's what you gotta understand. You say you wonder why it's that serious, but then you have, but then you have to look at it this way. This is how you make your living. This is how you actually provide for yourself and your family. That's one. But then the second part is, I'm assuming that those women are not making the type of money that they're really comfortable with. So now you're fighting for an opportunity to be able to make less money than you're probably saying you're happy with, and that's even now being put into question because you don't have, you're losing your position to this person. And then couple that with maybe that person is like they're 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 flexing on you maybe at training or in practice. There has to be more. That's what I'm saying though, Tom. Just yeah, playing time. There's personal issue for mass. For sure. they, mass they, they play on the same national team too. Mass yeah, attack. Just they play just the playing same time though? on the national team and on and on the club team, bro. But you guys both believe that just playing time could cause this. I don't Not know, just playing time, but like I said, if people's been flexing on her, and then there's other like it could there's be extra stuff, stuff going on there, man. I yeah. think t- I think there's extra stuff. Go- <laughs> Tess, you look like you think there's extra stuff going on. I mean, there has to be. I've never in my life even <laughs> contemplated hurting another <laughs> my teammate because they're in the same position of me, or playing, yeah. or like trying to get violent with somebody oh, because oh, listen, I think I, it's just I, I think that's way too far way too far <laughs> that's what i have to say like no i've never <laughs> contemplated hurting anybody but I mean, let me ask you a question <laughs> but oh, but i'm let african let's hear the question let's hear the question let me ask you a question okay have you ever been in a position where you were playing behind somebody and then in order for you to you know that the only way you're going to get to play is if either that person or the team doesn't play well and then you're basically in a position where you're Suedo semi cheering against your own team or your own teammate. Does that happen? Has that ever happened? I mean, there's a feeling where you know what you want your chance and stuff, but at the end of the day, when the game starts <laughs> and like it's going on, you actually want yes, your team to no. lose. Oh, no I way. Come no. on. <laughs> For me, at the end of the day, if your team does well, everyone on the team is is doing well. You're still playing. That's why you're saying that. Listen. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love the honest. No way. Bro, listen, like, okay, <laughs> this, this, this is the thing that I learned. This is Maybe the thing that, that I left. This I'm no this longer is on. The thing that I learned in Europe, okay? Lose, it's better they lose without you. Okay, this is a saying that I learned in Europe. I didn't teach myself that. I didn't teach myself that. That's a say, that's a learning a, a, a saying I learned out here. If the team is gonna lose, it's better to lose without you. Because if they if they win without you, they don't need you. And if they don't need you, then you're the guy that's expendable. And if you're expendable, you're eventually gonna lose your contract because all these other people are playing without you. And that's what happens if you're playing on top teams. And that's why you got mans that are stressed. If you're playing on a team that's with that's supposed to be winning all the time, and for whatever reason you're not playing, you're not necessary. If you're not necessary and you cost a lot of money for that team, they'll find ways to get rid of you and find somebody else who costs less money, and then your opportunities are gone. And people are constantly like I've seen teammates fight. I've seen guys that play the same yeah. position fight before. For sure, uh, like I you, can you see guys it. don't know them. Right? I can I see both sides. That's the thing. Yeah, that's why oh, I always try God. to be a good locker room guy. You know, that's the only reason I'm still on my men's league team. Is I'm a good locker room guy. <laughs> Keep me around. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll bring some brewskis, play some music, have some fun. <laughs> this stuff is not the same when guys are playing for contracts. You see, guys that team up. Like you see, like I was on a team and the guys that speak French, they all hang together because they don't play on the same position. They get into fights. The two strikers on our team, both of them were playing, we were playing strikers. They're both trying to fight to be the main guy on the team. They got into a physical fist fight, bro. 
just because they, when they're on the field, if the Argentinian guy doesn't pass the, to the Algerian guy, he gets upset and starts cursing at him. The Argentinian guys are all speaking each other in their own language. He understands the language. He knows they're talking about him. He confronts them in the training, in the, in the locker room. There's a physical fist fight just because two guys are playing the same position and they're both fighting to be, to be the main guy on the team. I've seen it. It happens all the time. It just doesn't get talked about publicly. Fair yeah. enough. No, it's That's true. It's, it's just I never it's the it. reality of competition, you know, like it's how you deal with it. But I, my thing is like, I've seen in many situations where there's a lot of guys that act like that and the team is shit because of it. You know, no chemistry. Yeah. The best teams in the world could be shit. You know, you wonder why some of these national teams that have all these good players are not doing well. It's because of that. You know, so me personally being in the game for this long, now 34, I can't promote that because I know at the end of the day, it's terrible for the team and the team will not be, be successful because of it. I look, I look back to my time in Toronto, me, Josie, Sebastian Javinko, all playing the same position. All were doing, they were, they were obviously superstars, but I was doing my part too. Ar arguably could have started some games, but we're best friends, all three of us. I don't know, maybe just different environment. Everybody knows their role. But we're all best and friends, environment, and no doubt. because of that, there was a good chemistry on the team, and we won championship. 100%. Experience and environment, big factors in both of your guys' uh, perspectives and opinions, so that's cool. And I like getting those, because you guys are in the trenches. You're telling real true stories. So what Tam said is like the, the raw truth of a lot of European teams that I played on. Not so much the same in MLS. I don't know why. Because there isn't culturally uh, and historically, and the fabric of these teams isn't as like heavy. And these is would you say maybe that? that it's also because everybody's no, status dude. is already published. If you're a DP, it says you're a DP. If you're a, a TAM player, you're a TAM player. If you're a general allocation, you're general allocation. Like the roles are set there publicly. Maybe that's why everybody knows their role. But right. um, it's partly yeah, that much better environment, it's, definitely. It's partly that, but it's also partly because it's so difficult to get out of those roles. Like if you if all you had to do was score more goals than the DP to get DP money, you guys would be killing it. I mean, it's I've seen players go from TAM to DP and and vice for and backwards. So I quickly, mean, quickly, quickly to Amartas, what is TAM and what is DP? DP is a designated player. Uh, I think it's above salary, 1.6 million and above. So that'd be Carlos okay. Vela, Chicharito. TAM is um, between above general allocation money and below 1.6 million. So that's in between like 600,000 and 1.6 million, those players there. And then general is like 600,000 okay. and lower. And each team could have three DPs. So then you think that's a factor. Of TAM money, but each player to the salary cap is only 600,000, if that makes sense. Okay. Totally. Yeah, people but should have TAM money DP. to buy up those players, and you have DP room to sign those players to 7 million if you want. If that makes sense, quick, no, quick. No. Um, I think also like the, the <laughs> cultural difference also, like you people are brought up in the environments in North American sports where like Toss says, you support your teammates regardless. And some, like a coach will sit you for not supporting your teammate openly, whereas in Europe, this competition is, is kind of fed, it's fed to you, like where you're in competition with your teammates. So if he's doing better than you, you will sit and people just kind of generally grow this, this uh, nature, not even, not even just in Europe. Like if you look at kids coming from, from South America, from Africa or whatever, like what they do is how they survive. If you got yeah. kids that are playing in South America where they know that if they don't succeed playing football, they will live in poverty. Like that type of mentality is going to have you busting somebody's jaw if they're taking that opportunity to and their family. It's just yeah. a different, it's a different environment, bro. You know, and this is why I have to bring you guys back to talk separately, break down individually your perspectives and careers at a different time. But we got enough of your guys' time today. So like me and Jones wanted to like wrap up, but talk to you guys about the city that we're all come from and yep. just yeah, Sorry, I was gonna say it. when when was the last time all three of you were in the same room chopping it up? Oh, have we ever minutes never all hundred years? Oh, Me and Tam yeah. played for the same team though, so we had our yeah. we had our moments yeah, in our little yeah. cabin. <laughs> we're all three connected way different ways and different generation. I went. Well, I just thought maybe one time there was just like that odd, you know. 
But hey, Maybe that's what Zoom's for. All three of you chopping. It's it actually down. all family oriented. Exactly. Because <laughs> I know Tusk quickly. I know Tusk from like Kurt and my cousin Dimitri is his friend from when they were young. And I know Tam because my cousin Sid was his friend. And then Tam came to Trinity with me in high school. So literally family and through just Southside, to be honest. Okay. Edmonton shrinks every year. <laughs> every year you get older, you're like, oh, you know this one? Oh, oh. <laughs> Next thing you know, like two, your best friend's cousin's married to this one. You know what I mean? But yeah, quickly, I just want to say, what do you guys miss the most about the city? And what do you definitely love about being away from the city? <laughs> I go first time. You go, you go. They both want to pass it. <laughs> like, I got a lot yeah. here, you know. <laughs> I don't know about me, me, it's simple. Like my mother was just here and I, I miss my family very much. I really do. I miss my friends, my friends and my family. Because every time I go home, it's like like this. Like you see people that you haven't seen for years and you realize how, how much you, you miss having most. What I don't miss is the weather, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. The most surefire answer. And Tuss, what about you, my man? I miss, yeah. Similar to Tam, I miss I miss family. I miss just going to Irie Foods, eating eating food, not paying. Patty and things. Just quick, yeah. just drive right in the back, just put a dish together, mix everything. Um, miss miss that definitely. Um, Yo, shout out to Miss P. Legend. <laughs> yeah, some of the boys oh. ordered food. Goddamn legend. Goddamn <laughs> legend. Miss P, I miss you and the dumplings. Oh, and the fish. Oh, Miss P. <laughs> Taz, oh, I want to cry. Yo, I'll kick, I'll kick, I'll kick someone else's mom for your mom's food, man. That's how real Miss P's food. Jesus, Ooh, <laughs> I know. It's like, hey now. Hey and now. what I don't miss, <laughs> what I don't Ms. miss, food. is driving around in winter because that's dangerous. Oh. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I know. I'm dreading that right now. Oh. Holy the oh. hen day, white mud when there's like snow on there, and you're just your back, your back tires just going like this. Oh. This whole whole Gosh, time. Don't talk about it. Uh, you know, I hate bro. that. I hate that. Damn. Bro, you just gave me a cold chill in my back. Gave me a cold chill in my back, Tuss, man. I hate <laughs> that, man. Dangerous. Winter. Winter is the worst thing ever, man. Yo, respect my boys. Me and yeah. Jones much appreciate it. Edmonton appreciates it. Canada is going to appreciate it. We're going to put this out there. Everyone's going to see it. Bless up to my boys, Tussat Ricketts, Vancouver Whitecaps striker. Bless up to my brother, who I miss, Tam and Danny and Saliwa, running yeah. that big thing out there on the beach side. I'm Yo, I have to come now. down for a German burger. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm Still, come, come. We're bringing them both back because I have different things to talk to them both about. And I could go on forever with Tam because as Tuss knows, Tam is Tam something else. You know what I mean? <laughs> what you know what I mean? Like, hey, what am I doing? Yeah, you know me. it. Don't act no. like you don't know it. me. <laughs> and bless up to my brother from another Craig Jones. You already know. I, I, I enjoy articulating my point of view. I enjoy no. articulating my point of view. That's why you'll be <laughs> back, my guy. You All know right. that. I'm pumped to see All you right. articulate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, red, dot, red dot headshot. No warning podcast. Bless up to the boys. Canada, boys. let's go. Let's go. Two Canada. victory, right. six points. We need this. Baby. Definitely. Later.